Welcome to VBAR 101, I'm Fredrik Mellin, aka Mr. Mel. Um, today I'm gonna go over step by step how to program the governor with a separate receiver. Uh, since so many have trouble in getting the concept. It is easy. When you get it, it's gonna you're gonna say, oh that of course, that's how it's work. Key to making the VBAR governor work is to understand the concept of controlling the governor with one single channel. A single channel can only be at one particular point in time uh, in a, at a certain time. So what the VBAR team has done is to make a what you call combined mode where half the um, range of the signal throttle in this case is used to control the servo directly. When you go over to the other half then the governor is active and it uh, translates to a head speed. That head speed in terms are defined by what you enter into the max head speed screen. So I have made a little program here just to show this in a graphical manner, meaning half my travel, then the servo is moving, uh, it's outputted directly, I can program curves in the radio and do whatever I want to, uh, everything is direct control, governor is now off. Then I go over to the other side, uh, other half of my travel and now it translates to a head speed. The governor is now active, uh, the, the head speed is governed, and the, the level of head speed depends on where the signal is at. So 100% translates to what I entered into that max head speed uh, field in the VBOR program. So in this case, in this sample program, I have 1910 as my maximum head speed. If I go down a few percent, then it might be 1860. If I go under 50 again, then it's back to controlled by stick, so I can set my idle, I can set my uh, throttle cut and everything. The, the governor is now off. So this is the concept of a single channel control. We call it combined mode because you have combined the modes of both direct control governor off and um, a govern mode where the governor is on. So understanding this you will get much easier to program your radio. But I will go over step by step how to program your radio to get this single channel mode working. One thing that uh, throws people a little bit off base uh, is the definition in VBAR of a signal and its level. Because in the VBAR it says from minus 100, then center is zero, then you have plus 100. It might be that it translates in your radio to 0, 50, and 100. It's the same thing. It's just different definitions of the signal. Some radios actually have from minus 100 to plus 100. But when you activate a certain function, it might be 0, 50, 100. So you need to keep track of this. And if I'm at 0 and saying you need to go lower, uh, that number might be minus 100. If I say minus 50 and you need to raise that number, uh, I probably should say go closer to minus 100 or to make it easier. But keep in mind that that uh, uh, this type of definition and, and this type of uh, um, conversion that actually happens uh, so you know where where you're at so in your 0 to 50 curve might be in the program same as minus 100 to 0. The only thing I did extra here is one extra cable between aux on the v-bar and throttle on the receiver that's the only thing so that's the only extra cable you need uh, you can use another channel if you want to. I'm using uh, throttle because that works on every radio. Uh, else you might run into issues. You don't have governor function in your radio or something like that. So first of all, uh, I've done the transmitter calibration, meaning uh, everything going in the correct direction and, and such things. The important thing here is the throttle is going into the aux, so you need to check with a 0 to 100 curve that your throttle is uh, moving the aux all the way from uh, minus 100 to plus 100. And also, uh, 
when you this is a new empty model so I have a pitch curve from 0 to 100 and a throttle curve 0 to 100 on everything so I'm gonna show you how to program the radio. Uh, keep in mind if it if you start a new model that you don't have hover trim or something and that in, interfere with a pitch channel or collective. So when that's done you're going to uh, governor one then you select nitro and press reset. Now with a separate receiver you don't have any options, so you have auxiliary here and uh, there you have option servo or channel 4, I'm using the servo output. Here is my throttle servo and we have uh, the carbona carburetor indicators here, so you have full and you have uh, closed. So first thing I'm going to do is I transfer control to the collective stick, that meaning the collective stick will take over control of the servo directly so i press on here and what happens now i can move the servo like this with the collective and it's the collective that actually does the and it's no governor in the background or anything so now i move to low stick and then i adjust the endpoints you can see the servo move here so i adjust it so i get it to uh, to the correct position then i go full throttle and adjust that one as well that's there. So that now I've set the endpoint. Should I need to, I could re reverse the throttle and it goes total reverse, but I don't, didn't need that for that one. So when this is complete, uh, everything is uh, set in regards to mechanical setup. I can press off here and then I need to go down and set my maximum head speed. That's the absolute maximum. I don't need anything higher than this. So let's say for sample 2200, press enter. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna leave gear ratio. Let's play around saying this is a 10 uh, gear ratio helicopter. You should enter your values here. So what is this strange thing with combined mode? Well, half of the stick is stick control now. So everything this much is directly stick control you see they're moving fast but as soon as i go over over uh, 50 percent it's governor control so you see this slow spool up here so when i go down and then go up and it's slowing to the set head speed and as you see on the screen uh, the requested rpm is changing depending on my stick here so what I'm going to do now is program the curves. Uh, that's the only thing we have left to do. The governor is basically set up uh, for nitro mode in, in what we call combined mode when you're using external receiver. Uh, so now we can control everything via the throttle channel in the radio. And that's uh, what I'm going to do by using different type of curves. So now I'm going to set, since this is throttle channel that controls the governor, we can use the throttle curves in the radio to control the whole thing. Uh, first of all, uh, the throttle trim here works just as normal. So I can set my idle here uh, or whatever it is. And then I know throttle cut is down here or, or whatever that is. I also make sure my throttle hold is working. Uh, in this case, it's too much. It's going to cut the motor. but uh, that you set on the percentage on hold. So, so um, then I have a normal curve as you see here, and it's actually 0, 4 to 8, and then 4 to 8 on the end. So it's a three point curve here where it's never going over 50. What, what does that mean? Well, my, uh, in normal mode, my stick is actually controlling the throttle directly. It's no uh, lag or governor involved here. So since it never goes out over 50%, it actually stays here. It's never going to go over 50% on the uh, carburetor either. But I can spool up with my stick and uh, hover around if I want to. Then uh, this curve you can do as as you want with as long as you stay below um, uh, below 50 uh, percent in idle up let's say uh, here i flip to idle up here i have a flat curve a flat curve of 89 and that translates in my program to 17 15 as you see here just gonna point out that you have 
to have a flat curve in idle modes because that percentage you should select on your flat curve translates to a head speed. Any deviation from a flat curve, meaning if the percentage changes, then the head speed will change as well. So for idle up modes, you must have a flat curve. And now governor is active. So you see the servo, if I go down here and flip, flip idle up directly, that's the soft start, this ramp up speed that you see here. So it goes up to the requested head speed and uh, and uh, it's govern control now. Then I when I need an idle up two, let's do one more and then I have 100% straight off. So that, then my requested head speed is 2200, um, which I set as max head speed. So this is how simple it is. It's not more than this actually to get the control in, in uh, when you're using a separate receiver setup. So hold, I have a uh, my idle, idle up a normal curve and then I have the trim here. One thing here and that's the magnet um, that is, we can test this by putting a magnet. You see it lights up and then I, so basically you should turn your clutch or whatever, uh, clutch bell, whatever, where the magnet is mounted and make sure when it's in front of the sensor, the, the LED there should light up so you know that the sensor is working. If you have trouble uh, calculating the uh, gear ratio, there is a calculator for you on the uh, second on the expert page, so you can uh, get help with that one. It also supports two stage if you have that, so you uh, get the correct ratio for your helicopter. So that finish the the governor setup as far as configuration. Now we have access to this page where you have the basic setting and you have the expert setting. To finalize, because we only have one single channel, the failsafe, if you get the sensor failure, your failsafe throttle curve is this one. That's what this is used for in the main screen. So this is the backup plan if the sensor fails.